welcome Fidelis scholars to our chapel worship. This year we are asking God to speak to us. We're saying, speak, O Lord. And today we're asking Him to speak to us, to lead me to do something great. Reminder, as we worship today, make sure to respond. Uh, adults and others, if you're in the room, respond along with them. It makes worship much more real. Grace to you, Hope Scholars. We worship in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen? Amen. Please fold your hands and let's pray. Dear Holy Spirit, come and enter our hearts today. Continue to make us and change us and help us build something that lasts forever for your glory and to be a blessing to the future. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Please say our Fidelis Bible passage with me. The Lord is trustworthy in all he promises and faithful in all he does. Psalm 145, verse 13. This week we've been looking at diligence, God's power for you to focus on your work, and we don't always do this perfectly. And this week, again, we haven't done it perfectly, and so we ask God for forgiveness, knowing that he has focused on us and has saved us. So please join me. Dear God, I am sinful. I do not always act with diligence. I deserve only your punishment. Forgive my sin because of Jesus. God loves you and forgives you because of Jesus. Jesus was diligent as he used every moment of his life to save you and give his people a lasting legacy. By faith, you receive forgiveness for all of your sins. As God's forgiven children, he now gives you power to focus on your work for him. Amen? Amen. God's message for you today is to do something great for your great God. Do something great. I think you want to do that. That that's, tends to be, we want, we want to make an impact on this world and just be amazing. In our story this week, we saw how God used Solomon to do something amazing. Solomon, as a leader of a whole nation, used other nations and made deals and used the best of his craftsmen and artisans to build an amazing building, a whole courtyard. And the picture on the screen doesn't really do diligence to it. I mean, it, it was a spectacular building, and the inside of it was coated with gold, and it took so many hours of amazing craftsmen to put it together. They, they built it with stones, and they didn't have any uh, hammers or chisels at the site. They cut everything perfectly at the site, and when they brought the stones there, it just fit on in. And they did that because it was a place for God's presence to dwell, a sign he was with them, a chance to give them glory so every nation around would know they had something special and so they could share the message of the Lord. Now Solomon did that, but he died. But the temple stayed on afterwards. It was a blessing to the next generation. The next generation, what he left behind, pointed people to the Lord. And what God calls us to do is to not just think of what we do here and now, but what can we do today that's going to last into the future for the people that would be our children, our grandchildren, our great-grandchildren, or 500 years from now. Right now we are, we are experiencing the blessings of what people have done for us many years in the past. Many of the institutions, organizations, nations, all those things were done by people who risked and had courage and worked hard and focused on building something strong. For us to be blessed. And that's why our virtue this week has been diligence. God's power for you to focus on your work. But not just to focus on what we didn't need to do now. But focus on a long-term goal of what can we do today that will make an impact in the future. So legacy. That's what we're talking about. And usually, if you're in middle school, you aren't thinking too much about your legacy. I mean, maybe you're not. But I know high school students do. They think about, you know, getting the track team record, getting the high jump, getting, getting their team to state, winning the championship, doing something uh, that no one else has done before, maybe getting their name on a little plaque for honor roll or getting the highest ACT score or getting to be a National Merit Scholar or, or something. Having a team that makes an impact that when you come back 50 years from now, you can see it. And even when you're in heaven, you can come back and see it. A legacy is something that lasts after your death. And God calls us to think big term and long term. You can maybe think of people, heroes that you know that are no longer alive, but what they did still has impact today. Any of the presidents that have died have impacted our nation. 
Think of civil rights leaders like Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. and many others who aren't alive anymore, but what they did is still impacting us. Even think of business leaders, people who started companies like IBM, uh, people who uh, came up with ideas like the computer, inventions that we're still enjoying and making use of. That's legacy. The most important legacy is what can we leave for the future generations that points them to the Lord? And you do that being God's temple. 1 Corinthians 6 says something amazing about how we don't have a, a physical temple anymore where God says He dwells, but you do have a temple. Let's talk about it. It says, Do you not know that your bodies are temples of the Holy Spirit who is in you, whom you have received from God? You are not your own. You were bought at a price. Therefore, honor God with your bodies. God has made your body His temple. He chooses to dwell in you just like He had a a presence that dwelt in that temple. You're, you're the temple walking around, being God amongst everybody else, being a witness to God everywhere else. You are a temple. And so what you do now is leaving a lasting legacy if you show God to other people. And that's our mission and purpose, to show God by being a servant leader. And you do that by letting people know God lives within you. They can see it by what you do and say and how you act. How did God get in there? By His Word, by the power of His baptism. That's how God dwells within you, and you are His temple. He, he, put, he, put you, he put Himself there by dying on the cross and taking your place. So um, let's compare Solomon's temple to your temple. Solomon's temple, some people say at least 100 million. Some people say it's billions. It took seven years to build. It lasted hundreds of years. God's people would enter it. And it pointed people to Jesus with all the sacrifices and rites that went there. It told people that someone would come and sacrifice so people could be with God. What about you? Your body is a temple and you are really priceless. We see that, that God was willing to pay the price for you. His own blood had to pay for you. How many years did it take to build you? How, how, you, how many years are, old are you? That's, that's how long it took to build. And really, God's going to keep on building you your whole entire life. You have an eternal soul. You will last forever, and the souls that you touch, the souls that you impact, that will last forever. Just like the God's presence entered the temple, the Holy Spirit enters you through His Word and baptism, and the whole point of your life is to point others to Jesus. So what are some big takeaways? Well, God who loves us and Jesus is worth the best of everything. All, all our best thoughts, our best designs, our best gifts, our best, best materials. Uh, that temple was really, really expensive. And God said, that's great. And so whatever we can do, we give the best to God, the best of ourselves, the best of our gifts, uh, regardless of what you do. Uh, the temple pointed to Jesus, and we want everything we are and everything we do to point to Jesus. And in this lesson, probably more than any other lesson, we see that God's use of uh, artisans and people who work with their hands and craftsmen um, that serve the Lord in amazing ways. And maybe you are not someone who's going to speak a lot of God's message to people, but you can, you can use your, your hands uh, in your job and you can, you can show people how much you care about the Lord by the way you take, take care of your craft. Jesus was a carpenter for the first 30 years of his life, and you could be like Jesus and just do things with excellence for Jesus. You can be honest to people and take care of people, and maybe you can use art or music to give glory to the Lord. That's a reminder in this story that out of thanks to God, you can use every gift you have to point to Jesus. So if you know that you're God's temple and that you're to point people to Jesus, let me hear you say amen. Amen. Please say John 3.16 with me. For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only Son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have eternal life. John 3.16. Please fold your hands and pray with me. Dear Heavenly Father, you are worth our praise. You deserve the best. We repent and apologize for all the times we haven't given our best. Maybe we uh, did things half-heartedly or, or didn't even think of you at all. Forgive our sins because of Jesus and send your Holy Spirit to, to live in us as your temple to do our best in everything for you. We ask you to, to bless us, keep us safe, keep us going forward this school year. We pray this all in Jesus' name and now join together in the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, 
Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Receive the blessing from our God. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look on you with favor and give you peace. Amen? Amen. Thanks so much for worshiping with me.